Let Garmin Marine Support show you how to install your Force Pro trolling motor. For this process, you will need a power drill, 5 16 drill bit, a number 1 and number 2 Phillips head screwdriver, 3 and 4 millimeter hex bit or wrenches, 14 millimeter socket, a torque wrench, marine grade sealant, and circuit breaker rated for 60 amps or greater. When extending the power cable, make sure to use 6, 4, or 2 gauge wire, depending on the distance to the batteries. Solder and heat shrink tubing will be needed if extending the power cable. You must install the trolling motor away from large metal objects when stowed or deployed. Large metal objects can interfere with the magnetic compass, affecting the built-in autopilot performance and potentially leading to personal injury or property damage. Install the trolling motor on the bow of the vessel and as close to the center line as possible. The motor bumper must hang over the gunnel of the boat. The installation hardware for the trolling motor is included in labeled bags. Each procedure begins with a reference to the label on the parts bag needed. To begin, place the included mounting template on the mounting location with a motor bumper on the template overhanging the gunnel or the edge of the boat deck. Drill the mounting holes using a 5 16 drill bit. Then wipe the area clean. Parts in bag A will contain six bolts, nuts, washers, and a safety strap to secure the Force Pro when stowed. You will need to purchase stainless steel pan head quarter 20 bolts if the bolts provided are not long enough for your installation. Place the safety strap under the mount base near the center with the hook and loop fasteners facing downward. You must place the safety strap under the mount before you secure it to the surface. If you do not install the safety strap at this time, you may need to partially disassemble the motor later to install it correctly. Place a bead of sealant around each hole to prevent water intrusion. Lift the pull cable to expose the mounting holes. Insert one screw. Placing a screw in the mount before installation will prevent the sealant from smearing. Place the mount base on the boat deck on top of the safety strap. Align the holes on the mount with the mounting holes. Secure the mount to the deck using the included bolts, washers, and locking nuts with a number 2 Phillips head screwdriver and 14 millimeter socket. Tighten the nuts to 8 foot pounds using a 14 millimeter socket and torque wrench. Pivot the lower link of the mount forward until it locks into the base. Push the two safety rods into the lower link as far as possible. Make sure the bushings are installed in the lower holes on the steering servo housing. You can reinsert them from the inside out if the bushings were removed. Two people are recommended for this next step. Hold the pull cable up and place the steering servo housing onto the lower link of the mount. While lifting up on the steering servo housing, push the pivot pin from bag B through the housing and the link to hold it in place. Push the safety rod toward the steering servo housing as far as possible to lock the lower pivot pin in place. Pivot the upper gas spring toward the lower link of the mount so the base of the gas spring aligns with the safety rod and mounting holes and press down. 
the screw holes on the base should align with the holes on the bottom of the mount. Secure the base of the gas spring to the lower link of the mount using two of the four included screws in bag C. Tighten the two screws using a number two Phillips head screwdriver. Next, remove the tape securing the data cable to the steering servo housing. Make sure the bushings are installed in the upper holes of the steering servo housing. You can reinsert them if the bushings were removed. Pivot the upper link of the mount forward. Tip the top of the steering servo housing inward so the holes on the upper link and the housing align. Push the pin through the holes on the upper link of the mount and the steering servo housing. Secure the pin using the screws and washers on both sides. Use two 4mm hex bits or wrenches so the pin does not rotate as you tighten the screws. Then route the cable from the steering servo housing to the display panel on the upper link of the mount. Push the connector onto the port on the display panel and rotate the locking ring clockwise to secure it. Do not force the connector into the port. The connector is key to fit into the port one way only and will fit easily when aligned correctly. The contents in bag E will contain a R-pin, washer, pull handle, and two screws for the pull handle. Insert the pull cable through the handle. Place the washer on the pull cable. Push the R-pin through the hole on the end of the pull cable. Make sure the R-pin is flush with the bottom of the cable. Place the handle cover on the handle. Using a number one screwdriver, tighten the two screws. Then measure approximately 16 inches on the power cable from where it connects to the steering servo housing and look for the mark on the cable applied at the factory. Mark this spot with a marker or tape if you do not see the mark on the cable or if the mark is not approximately 16 inches from the connection. Route the transducer cable through the channel along the right side of the mount. Then route the power cable through the channel above the transducer cable. Using the pull cable, carefully lift the motor from the deployed position to the stowed position. Use caution when lifting the trolling motor in the stowed position. Only one of the lifted gas springs is secured at this point in the installation. Place one of the brackets with two screw holes from bag F over the marked location on the power cable. Secure the bracket to the mount using the two screws with a 3mm hex bit or wrench. Hold the cables against the bottom of the mount where they exit the channel. Place the other bracket over the cables and against the mount. Align the holes on the bracket to the mount. Secure the bracket to the mount using the two screws with a 3mm hex bit or wrench. Insert the lower tab on the remaining bracket into a slot below the cables. Rotate the bracket toward the mount base to hold the cables. Secure the upper tab of the bracket to the mount base using a single screw. Install the cable clips to secure the transducer cable to the power cable where needed. For this next step, you will need two people. Deploy the trolling motor halfway. Align the hole on the base of the lower gas spring with the safety rod and press down. Secure the base of the lower gas springs using the two remaining screws included in bag C, 
with a number two Phillips head screwdriver. Now we will install the propeller. The parts back containing the hardware needed for this are included in the box with the propeller. Begin by inserting the pin through the propeller motor shaft. If necessary, rotate the motor shaft to orient the pin horizontally so it is less likely to fall out during installation. Align the channel on the inside of the propeller with the pin and slide the propeller onto the motor shaft. Place the anode, washer, lock washer and nut onto the end of the motor shaft. Using a 14 millimeter socket, tighten the lock nut to 12 foot pounds with a torque wrench. Now route the power cable to the breaker panel or the location where you plan to install the breaker. If necessary, extend the power cable using the appropriate wire gauge based on the length of the extension. The Force Pro trolling motor power cable can be installed on a plug and receptacle. The plug and receptacle must be rated for 60 continuous amps. Make sure the breaker and power are turned off before connecting the power cable. Then, connect the power cable to a circuit breaker rated for 60 continuous amps. The Force Pro trolling motor can work on a 24 or 36 volt battery bank capable of supplying 60 amps continuous. The Force Pro trolling motor will recognize either 24 or 36 volt configuration when powered on without changing any settings. The Force Pro trolling motor has a built-in GT56 UHD transducer. The GT56 transducer will provide high wide traditional chirp plus clear view and side view in UHD imagery. A compatible chart plotter will be required to use the transducer built into the Force Pro trolling motor. And that's it. Thanks for watching. For more help, please subscribe to the Garmin Support YouTube channel and visit marinesupport.garmin.com.